I was inspired by some videos uh, by Jennifer McGuire on YouTube. Uh, she likes to do stitchable cards where you can actually punch out the holes with a die for like a Sizzix, Sizzix Big Shot machine or some of those others. But I wanted to try my canvas, um, my brother scan and cut piercing kit to make my stitch cards. And on this one, I just did a, a background of embroidery s stitches and then I glued uh, some tatting that I had done. So I like to just make uh, elements to put in my journals. And I just made a heart here where I wove the threads in and out in a we uh, weaving pattern. So you can also do cross stitch or needlepoint or anything like that on, on the cards. On this one, I actually designed or took a cross stitch pattern that I have and made just the holes for the stitches and I left the other area not punched and I also um, sandwiched it with some blanket stitching on that one. And then here's a little cow cross stitch pattern and I just glued an additional cardstock on the back. These are just some simple tags that I did a geometric in. Here's an example of the holes punched and you can do any design on there that you want. But if you want to um, do a design where there are no holes punched uh, outside of the cross stitch area, I can show that on, on the uh, video that I'm uh, going to, to make. And so a lot of cute little elements that you can add some uh, texture and beads and, and things like that. So I really enjoy stitching these cards out. Today I am using the version 2.6.1 of the Brother Canvas Workspace. Um, you'll need to have your uh, go to your account settings and make sure that your premium function for the piercing is activated. If you go over to your shapes menu, you should see the piercing kit in here if you've activated it. And um, the thing that, that's nice is, is these are, they're already designed for you, but you can't change the dot spacing. I have not figured out a way to do it. You may be able to do it at the machine, but in the software, I have not found a way to resize these. And also you can't change the piercing operation you can't change uh, really anything uh, other than the position on the screen so that's not ideal if you want a particular design or you want it a certain size and plus I'm wanting to do cross stitch so I'm gonna design my own to create a cross stitch pattern that can be punched out on paper using your uh, scanning cut we'll need to bring our cross stitch pattern into the software somehow. And I would stick to patterns that are fairly small, no bigger than a uh, greeting card or something like that because it could really slow the program down, I have found. So if your program starts lagging, just go ahead and close as many things as you can so that you can conserve the memory. So uh, if you own a, a cross stitch pattern, go ahead and scan it into your computer or bring in an image that we can work with. And I have uh, created just a simple flower that um, that I made just, just so I can show several different things. So it's just, it's pretty sloppy, um, but it's gonna show all of the things that I need. So I created the pattern in my PC Stitch software, but you could scan your cross stitch pattern out. Uh, it's best if you can see the grid so while this is showing in my uh, Windows Explorer, um, I've got the preview window up. You can use any kind of drawing program or whatever you want to do, but I want to use the uh, snipping tool that's built into Windows, and I can't remember the shortcut for it, so I'm just going to do a little search here in my search box and type in snip. There it is, snipping tool and the shortcut should show here in a minute. Okay, the shortcut is uh, the logo, Windows logo plus shift plus S. So when your snipping tool comes up, go ahead and click on new. And then we're gonna come over here and just grab a piece of this picture. 
I'm just drawing a box around it. So now it's opened up in the snipping tool and I, I want to get it a little bit more precise. I only want to include the area that has stitches in it. I'm gonna try to eliminate all this outside area. So I'm gonna choose the crop, the image crop tool here at the top and you'll see all these little handles show up and we can zoom in a little because I wanna get a really good picture of the, um, let's see if I can make the screen bigger. I want to see the lines as well as possible. So I'm going to grab that little white handle at the top and bring it right next to the stitches at the top. And for some reason it zooms back out again when I do that. You can use any kind of drawing program that you want to crop out these images. But this one comes with windows, so there's nothing additional that you have to purchase. So I think I've got it pretty close. You want it as accurate as possible. It may be a little off once we get it into the Canvas workspace, and we can work with that, but I try to get as accurate as I can. So just taking a look at all sides so once I think I have it good enough I'm gonna click on this check mark and that looks pretty good so now I want to save that so I'm gonna click on the little save icon and I'm gonna call it video so I've got it in a folder where I know I can go back and grab it when I need it so I'm just gonna save it as a um, a JPEG, it, uh, just something that Brother Canvas can work with. And then just minimize that or I can actually close it. Go into your Brother Canvas workspace and then click on File, Import from your computer. And I'm going to go on over to that folder and choose the one I just did. And there, there is the one we just cropped out. Make a note of how many stitches wide and high your pattern should end up. And mine, I believe, is 42 stitches tall by 30 stitches wide. And I'm going to be working in multiples of 0.1 or multiples of 10 because it, the, doing the math is so much easier to design using the, the point one spacing instead of trying to do a 14 count cross stitch or something like that and trying to figure out the math all the way. It just, just slows everything down. So in that my pattern is 30 stitches wide. I know that I need this, the size of my image here to be 3.0. So th 30 stitches times the point one should be 3.0 and the height should be 4.2 since I have 42 stitches. So I'm going to go over here to the edit menu. If you don't have the edit menu up, click on this little icon right here and at the top of the choices, way up at the top, you'll see the width and the height of your image because it's still selected. If it's not showing up, you'll click on your image and you should see the width and the height. I only want the uh, one digit past the decimal because we want to stay within the multiples of 0.1. We don't want any extra digits in there. So I'm going to check, do a check mark here on maintain aspect ratio, and I'm going to change the width to 3.0 since I have 30 stitches wide, and it's going to automatically change the height so that it can maintain that ratio. So I'm going to type in 3.0 and now it has changed the height to 4.2 which is perfect for me. But if yours is not perfect on the height, you can uncheck the maintain aspect ratio and tweak it a little bit. And it's not going to distort your pattern very much if you're only working in multiples of uh, 0.1. So mine is okay the way it is. But just be sure 
that you when you start tweaking that you uncheck the maintain aspect ratio once you get one of the measurements correct so mine is correct now it should be three inches by 4.2 inches next while the image is still selected i'm going to change the x and the y to zero i'm going to be moving this image all the way up into the upper left hand corner the red line here is the cut space on your when you bring this to your machine the area outside of the red isn't isn't you cannot cut in that area so i'm going to ignore that red line and i'm going to start with zero zero that makes it a whole lot easier to do the math if you start with zero so um, now my image is all the way to the X and Y zero up in the left hand corner. So I'm gonna go to the layers tab and where the image is showing up here, I'm gonna lock it. And so now we're ready to start building the dots. For now, I want to go ahead and hide this image. So over in the um, layers tab here, I'm gonna uh, untoggle the visibility. And now it's there but it's just not in my way and I want to show a little demonstration on how the piercing tool works so in the shapes menu I'm going to just pull up a square and make it pretty small so this will go fast if I choose the operation pierce and change the dot spacing to anything it only follows the path on the outside of the square so I'm going to change it back to cut and then I'm going to go over to the um, edit menu and all the way down at the bottom I'm going to go to offset and choose um, the spacing of 0.1 because that's how far apart I want my dots. I'm going to go inward and click OK. So it's going to keep creating um, an inward offset so I have to repeat that until I can't do it anymore. keep going and this is not the ideal way I just want to show how the software works so if I zoom in on this you can see that when you get down to the center you may not have desirable results if you do the piercing so if I'm going to change this to 0.1 it gets a little weird in the middle you may like that little wonky look, but if you're, if you're trying to do cross stitch, this is not going to be ideal. So instead of making um, concentric squares or whatever word you want to use, I'm going to use just the path tool to create a stitch line or dot. So if I draw a straight line and then change that to piercing, then I can do a bunch of lines to fill in a space and that's going to give me the uh, what the spacing and the, the uh, look that I want it to have. So I'm going to take this one line and go over to the edit menu and um, change the height of it, uh, turn off the maintain aspect ratio because sometimes it does funny things if you don't. And I'm just going to make that one inch and I'm going to want to space the lines 0.1 apart, so I'm going to need 10 copies of this. So I'm going to press Control C to copy it, and then Control V to paste it. And Control V is the shortcut for paste. So I'm going to do that. I have two, so I need a total of 11. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I've got. Um, 11 I should have 11 of these lines and I just press Control V a whole bunch of times just to get those copies I don't need to try to select them here I can go over the layers tab and I can press Control A and because my image is locked it's only going to select the objects in my workspace that are not locked and so I know I'm only selecting the lines I can go over to the edit menu and then go over here to the align section and go to the picture of the line at the top 
and click on that and it will line them all up at the top but they're still not spaced out the way I want them to be so if I choose distribute objects it's going to distribute them within the selection if I click on horizontal so it just evenly spaces them here which is useful for some things but I want mine to be precisely 0.1 inch apart so while they are all still selected I'm going to go down to distribute space and type in 0.1 inch and then click the horizontal icon now that brings them all in together and as you can see on my grid it fits into a one inch square which is what I want so there is my little one inch cross stitch pattern with 10 stitches per inch from here, I can take a shape and create a frame. It can be any shape. And you're generally going to want a cutting line outside of your square or your cross stitch. You're going to need some kind of cutting line because you're going to punch out all of the uh, dots on the machine and then the machine will want to cut it out or you'll just take the whole sheet of paper that you've put in there or the cardstock and, uh, but in my case, I just want a little small piece cut out. So I'm created a square, and then I can select, first of all, let me do this. I want to select all of these and group them, control G. And then, then I can put this around there and then select both of them and then align them centers. And then, so now the machine knows to cut out this and you'll have one little tiny cross stitch pattern. So that's how you can create frames. And you can also take this one and um, offset it outward, however far out you want it. And then you can take the middle one, let me move that out of the way. You take the middle one and pier do a piercing so you can have an extra little border stitched around or if you want to do blanket stitch or something like that. So now you can line these all up and you've got some additional stitching. So there's a lot of design opportunities that you can do with the piercing capability. Okay, now you see the concept behind using a path or a straight line to make the dots. Now you may be able to understand better what I'm going to be doing with our cross stitch design. So I'm going to go in here and create a straight line by holding my shift key down. I'm going to click and then just move my mouse down. I'm not dragging the, I'm not holding the left mouse key down. I'm just moving the mouse. And with the shift key, press down, I'm going to get a perfectly perpendicular line. So now I'm going to just double click. And while that is selected, I'm going to go to edit. And I want to make the height of this uh, a little bit taller than my, um, my design. So I'm just making it 4.4 .4 should be plenty. Once again, I need a whole bunch of copies of this, like I did with the little one inch square. And since I have 30 stitches across on my design, I'm gonna need more than that. I'm gonna need a few extra. So I'm gonna make uh, a, a probably 35 or 36 copies of this. And I'm gonna do it quickly, just the way I did it before. Control C and then Control V a whole bunch of times. so I should have a whole bunch on there. I'm going to go over to my Layers tab, make sure that image is still locked. Control A to select all of those lines, Edit Menu, align their tops, and then distribute the space 0.1 inch apart. And now I can group those, control G. Takes a little while, my program's thinking about it right now. And 
and then I want to move it all the way to the zero X and zero Y position just like we did on the image and I want to go to the layers tab and turn my image back on so let me minimize the group and turn that image back on I need to have enough lines to cover the design and it looks like I did pretty good on that and I have uh, three or four extra ones I have three extra ones on the edge now that it's in position I'm going to leave the image locked and I'm going to right click on that group and I'm going to ungroup it the only reason I grouped it to begin with is so that I could move it all into the corner without them uh, changing their position. If, if I would have left them ungrouped, they would have all stacked up in the corner on top of each other. So I'm going to select these three here. These are my extras, and I'm going to just shorten them. They're easier to work with if they start off a little shorter. And then I'm going to Control C, Control V, and make a few more copies of that. So anytime you get your, to where you're running out of these, you can just make more copies. So now that we've got that all set up, I'm going to uh, go ahead and press Control A, and it's going to select all the lines. I want to change it to a color that's not in my design. And then I also want to go ahead and change the operation to pierce so we can actually see the dots. And I'm going to change the dot spacing to 0.1. And you can see my dots are lining up pretty well with the stitches in my design. I have done it before where I didn't do such a good job, but as long as it's close, you're going to do okay. If you did your original crop of your image as accurately as possible, you should be pretty close to it. Again, sometimes I don't get it right, but we're really with a cross stitch design. Um, if, if you're close, it's just a guideline just so that we'll know how many squares to make our design. I'm going to try to move through this pretty fast so the video doesn't get very long. But the, the first uh, step that I'm going to do is make sure that all the areas that need a stitch in it has a dot in all four corners. So when I start drawing the lines, I'm going to have to make sure that I'm touching, there. there's a dot touching all of these colored squares. I'm not going to worry about what color they are. They could all be black and it wouldn't, it wouldn't even matter because you're going to stitch this out following your cross stitch pattern. But we're just going to be punching holes so that you'll have a place to put your needle. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is just start with these three green squares over here on the right and I'll click on that first column of dots and the little squares at the top and the bottom of this thing, those are your handles to resize. So let's see if I can zoom out just a little so we can see both handles. So I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm going to drag the bottom handle to the bottom of those green squares and the top handle to the top of those green squares. I'm ignoring the little circle at the top because that is a rotate tool. And um, I may not have done this exactly, so I'm going to go over to the Edit menu, and I can see that the position is 3.0 and 2.22. And remember, we need a perfect multiple of the 0.1. So on the Y position, I'm going to change that to 2.2. I'm going to round up or down to the nearest tenth of an inch so that it will be perfect. And the height is not perfect either, so I'm going to round that up to 0.3, and I can easily see that that's three squares high, so I know it needs to be 0.3. So that looks good. So that's how you do the dots in the corners of your design. So on the next line, I need to look at this, the stitching that's on both sides of that column and I need to drag it to the longest area down here and make sure all of the squares that have stitches in it are on both sides of the line. So that's going to be six stitches high, so that needs to be 0.6. The position on the X looks good, but the Y needs to be 2.1. And we continue in this manner until we have all of these 
dots touching all of these squares. So if you get to an area like this that has a gap in it and you have a section of stitches, uh, for instance this when you have four and then it skips and then there's a whole bunch here and then it skips again, what, what you need to do, it's, let's just do the top one first. So that's four stitches high. That looks good. The Y needs to be 0.4. All right, I got that one done, but now I need some dots to cover these squares here. So I'm just going to borrow one of these and fill in the next section and then change everything that needs to be changed. That one actually looks pretty good. Grab another one of these until I finish that whole column. So that's four stitches high, so that's 0.4 on the height. The X and Y look good. And we continue till we finish the whole flower. You can go over to the Layers menu at any time and turn off the image. And that way you can see your progress. Right here I can see I've got a shape starting and uh, I've got some shapes starting over here. So I'm going to continue on with the flower till I get most of it done and then I'll be right back. Okay, you want to be sure and save your work pretty frequently because it's a lot of work if, you, uh, if your program crashes on you. So I've got the dots done and I can go over this image and turn it off and you can see the flower shape. So right now this is a 10 stitch or uh, 10 stitches per inch cross stitch pattern without all of the holes in the other areas of the cardstock. And so the thing that uh, most people are going to want to do is change the stitch count. So the results that you get from doing this may not be exactly what you want, so you're going to have to experiment. But the way I was able to make it happen, like if I wanted a 14 uh, count cross stitch pattern, I would have to uh, do some workarounds to make that happen. So the first thing I want to do is go over here to my um, dots. I'm going to choose that group and right click and make a duplicate copy just in case I mess up. So I'm going to lock one of those copies and hide it. So I'm only working with one at a time. So the position on the screen really doesn't matter because I'm no longer going to be working in the point 0.1 multiples. If you were choosing to do a 14 count uh, cross stitch pattern or you want to change the spacing to 14 count, the uh, digital or the uh, decimal form of that is point, um, I think it's point oh seven one something or another. So I just decided to go with a 0 .07 spacing, and that would be really close to being a 14 count pattern. So the first thing I want to do is go over here and change my dot spacing to 0 .07. And right away you can see now my dots are getting really wonky. So I'm going to have to change the height of this to accommodate that. Go over to the Edit menu, click on Resize, and turn off the Maintain Aspect Ratio and only change the height to 70%. And then click OK. So now we got this little squatty flower going on and the reason for that is we only changed the height and we didn't change the width. But we're going to change the width by making the uh, spacing between the columns to be the 0 .07 to equal the dot spacing. If you're wondering why I didn't just resize the whole thing to change the dot spacing, I got terrible results trying that. So I've had to do this work around to change it step by step. So now that I have changed the height of the um, design here to be 70% of its original, I can go in and um, 
work on spacing these columns 0 0.07 apart. It's going to bring everything in a little bit tighter. I need to go ahead and ungroup this whole thing. So let me just show you what happens if I go in here and distribute the space to point, point, oh, I can't type today, point oh seven horizontal. What that does is every single line, whether it's a short line or a long line, it spaces them all out 0.07 apart from each other, and that is not what we want. So I'm going to click on Undo. And what I have to do is every column that has a bunch of little short lines in it where there's a gap, that whole column of dots needs to be grouped together. So these first three columns look okay. There's no dots above or below, but this one has a little gap there. So I'm going to select everything in that column and then Control G. And I'm gonna keep repeating that for every column that has a break in it. Like here's one, Control G each time. I'm not gonna keep repeating it. Just You'll just know that when you see me select this, I'm grouping as I go. Each column is going to be grouped to itself. And there's a way we can check. I'm going to skip one on purpose, just so I can show you to, how to tell where you've missed. There's a, there's a little one down here at the bottom. Don't want to miss that one. Once you get going, it goes pretty fast. It can seem tedious, but if you pick a really simple design to begin with or to practice on, then um, you can decide whether you want to really design any more of these. want to select one column at a time. Now I should have missed one. So what I want to do is go ahead and select all of them. And you can see right here there's a gap. So that tells me, and there's a gap right here, that tells me that I've missed a couple of them. So let me go back and fix those and see where that other one was. I think it's this column right here. All right, I don't see any more gaps, so everything should be good to go now. I can, I can now go over to the distribute space and change the horizontal spacing because each column is now grouped together with itself so it will stay together whenever I do this distribute uh, procedure. So I'm going to click on, make sure it says 0 .07, then I'm going to click on the horizontal. So now our flower is uh, proportional. Now, one thing that I have found, and um, I probably should have checked this early on, but um, sometimes, and I don't know why it is, that you'll have a column like this one seems to be out of line. It, the dots are not lined up like they should. So I'm going to select that one column and go to the Edit menu. Let's see if I can do this. Go to the top. And it shows the height as 2.38. I don't know what the multiples of 0.07 are. I'm not worried about it right now. But for some reason, I was able to fix it by just changing it to something else and then changing it back. See if that fixes it. So now it seems to be in line. I don't know why that worked, but it did. But um, it seems like every time I do this, I'll have one or two columns that are not correct. But everything else seems to be lined up pretty good. And so now I think my flower is finished, so I'm going to press Control A, and then I'm going to group that together. 
and then I, I would save this one as a, uh, I would rename it to show that it's my point zero seven spacing, but let's bring in the first one and um, we'll just toggle the visibility and unlock it. And it landed on top of that one, so we'll just move it off to the side, but you can see right away that the dots are farther apart on our first one and also the um, design is quite a bit smaller with the uh, 0.07 spacing. So hopefully this will give you an idea how you can create your cross stitch patterns and um, go ahead and change the spacing to whatever you desire. But just keep in mind that I've only practiced the resizing or the respacing of the dots on my own little simple design. So if you get a more complicated design, uh, you may have uh, you know a little bit more difficulty uh, getting the, the results that you want. But this is just a, a work in progress and an experimentation on my part. And hopefully this will give you some ideas on how to design your own stitchable cards.